So a friend of mine was wanting to know how to do a morphing transition or a morphing effect inside of um, Premiere Pro or Final Cut or just whatever video editor. So I did a little video for her just to show her how to get it done. And I decided, well, let me take that video and make it into a public video. So I hope it helps you out. Try it out. Let me know if it works for you. Here it goes. Okay, so you want to do a morphing transition. Well, maybe not a morphing transition, just a morphing effect, because morphing transition is actually something totally different. Sorry for the confusion. Got my footage over here, and it should be the same doing this in um, Final Cut or Resolve, because I've actually done it in Resolve and Premiere. Uh, so I got my footage here, these two files. So we'll take the first one, drag it to the timeline, yada 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 because you know how to do all of this stuff already let's go ahead and flip this piece of footage to fit in the sequence properly you got that and then i got my other one i think it's here yep so i'll drag that one in i already got some in and out points so let's move one up to track two and one to track one and just stack them on top of each other all right so the first track that you're going from you need to find a spot that you want to start the transition and like right here i want to start it here so i'm going to cut the end of that clip there like so and then i'll just set up let me turn this one off now i'll set up the other one to be ready to go with the transition completed. So I'll scrub through here and I think I did it to where he was doing the shake. So I'll go like right about there. That's where I want it to be. So let's trim it back. Line it up. Like so. Maybe just a touch more just to be safe. All right. And then if I'm remembering right, he didn't quite stand on his mark. So my framing is off just a little. So if I were to change the opacity, I'll see that he's not really lined up right. So you may have to adjust your footage to fit properly with the scale and position and so forth. So let me push him down a little bit there. Move them over a little bit here. But see, I see this frame is starting to break there, so I need to scale it up some. And just sort of play with it. Move it back over here like that. You don't have to be perfect, but it is better if you get it close. You know, so something like that. All right, so we got that lined up. Let's put the opacity back on clip one and this is when you start to create the transition using a mask um, so you go ahead and grab your mask I like to use the pen tool it's highly effective and if you can use a lot of points in your um, in your mask it'll make the transition a little bit easier to move around I mean it'll be tedious but it'll look better so I like to make a bunch of different points starting from the bottom something like whoops didn't mean to move it something like that and i'll move it in some and actually make sure you have your uh, playhead set um, at the beginning too or close to the beginning because you're going to have to use keyframes so make a bunch of points Damn it, I hate it when it does that. A few more points. And that should be plenty of points for this one. Okay. And then we'll make sure we have a feather on it. You know, just enough. Like that. And I should probably go ahead and just move it down a little. Just to start. So let's just move it down a little. So to have a bit of a clean start in the transition so I'll just reshape it however you see fit but having more points definitely works 
All right, so that's the beginning of it. Go ahead and mark it with the keyframe over here on the left as your starting point. And then move it ahead a couple frames. Like so. And honestly, um, the faster you can make these these moves happen, the better it'll look. So I'm going to really crank it up. Like so. And pull this one here like that. And I'm going to leave a couple points down for the first part of the transition. So then I'll move it ahead a little more and grab these. Start pulling these up. Is that way to look a little more organic? And you can move stuff around. Something like that. And push it out. Move ahead a couple more frames. Fix your screen. Not like that, but not too far. Don't want to rotate it, just use your points. Okay, move it a little more. And you're almost finished. So I like to take it up to about the shoulders or something like that, right up under the chin. And just utilizing all of these points. And then move it one more a little bit and just finish it out totally. Like that. So, dang it, and just drag these extra ones out as well. Now, you're looking at this and you're thinking something's wrong. That's not, I wanted him to transform into the uh, tracksuit. And it's doing that because I have the mask is inverted, is not inverted. So you want to make sure your mask is inverted to do this transition. And you should see keyframes from the mask being moved around over here. So you just play it back and it should look somewhat okay. There. And I mean, you can play around with the timing. Like you see, there's a little bit of a artifact there. So if I click on the mask again, I'll just move that like that. And that adds another keyframe right there. And just keep moving it up. And then that gets a little bit better. Okay, but you get the gist on that. So that's creating a mask. All right, so that's done. And then you can add some color to it by taking that piece of footage that you uh, cut right there and nest it. <clears throat> I don't know what they call it in uh, Final Cut, <clears throat> but you nest it here. Or you do, I think it's called compound clip inside of Resolve. So you just nest it. So it's done like that. And turn on your effects so you can see them. And then you want to search for a glow effect. I think it's called Alpha Glow. I got a bunch of glow effects in here that I can't use. I need to uninstall those. Uh, yeah, Alpha Glow. So you just put that on your footage. And give it some color. Let's just go with green so it's sort of obvious. And you got this start color and this end color. I haven't figured out the difference on that. Um, seems like the start color is the main color that matters. And then you just change the brightness, change the glow amount, and there you have it. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's run it back, hit play.
Now we got a little bit of a glow on that. And yes, this is hideous. You know, it, it, this could be way better from a fine tuning perspective, but that is the gist of it. The main thing is just getting a mask created and um, just working your way through the keyframing to have the transformation happen. All right. Hope that helps you, little lady.